right. Should be live here on Twitter. Uh, we got P2W Fantasy. Um, I'm Nick. Uh, we got Anthony and Thor here. Uh, what's up, guys? Uh, how's it going? It's going good, man. Excited to be back. Excited to be back. Kind of a cool topic. Uh, looking forward to it. Yep, same here. Yep. Yeah, we uh, had a few connection um, issues early on, but I think we are completely good now. So uh, what we got going on today is uh, we're talking about Madden 21. I thought it was something um, different to do uh, instead of talking just strictly about fantasy. Does it relate to fantasy? A absolutely. I mean, um, we're talking about guys, how we view them, um, their, uh, their ratings on, on a game that we probably all uh, uh, played and been used to. Um, so what I thought we would do today is go position by position, quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, uh, and just say some interesting things that we, we we found when we looked at the ratings. And then we'll take a look at the rookies too. Um, but yeah, we can pull up the screen if we want. Uh, if we want to go small there, we can pull up the Madden screen. Um, well, let's start with uh, let's start with with quarterbacks. So uh, let me get that up real quick. I'll get the screen up with quarterbacks. So here's our overall. We can see the 99 club guys: Aaron Donald, Christian McCaffrey, Michael Thomas, Patrick Mahomes, Gilmore. Uh, those are the guys that made the cut so far. I don't know if they'll add or uh, um, adjust those, but uh, I don't think any any issues with those guys there. Well deserving, I think. Yeah, but here's our quarterback. So if we need to scroll up and down the list. We definitely can do so. Um, yeah. So a Anthony, any guy that uh, you can start us off with, maybe one guy um, who you thought, I don't know, maybe you were surprised by or too high, too low. You start us off with one guy. Uh, well. Something I noticed, and it's kind of a comparison between the two guys, but if you uh, scroll down on that list there, uh, we can find uh, Sam Darnold down there pretty low. And uh, low. being a uh, Jets fan, uh, I'm higher on Sam Darnold than most. I looked at his rating, and I see the person who's right above him, and that really bothers me. Um, I'm sorry, but I cannot – put Fitzpatrick above Sam Darnold under any circumstances. Um, did he have big weeks last year? Yes. But saying that Fitzpatrick's a better quarterback than Sam, Sam Darnold is, is kind of ridiculous to me. Um, the Jets had a better record by far last year. And you put a guy who's probably going to be their backup quarterback as a higher rated player in Madden than Sam Darnold, who's the Jets franchise quarterback right now. So, that that was one thing I noticed uh, taking a look at these ratings that kind of bothered me. My my boy uh, my boy LQ says Fitz Magic though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, he did have some huge weeks. I know he won uh, some people their fancy leagues by the, those big last weeks of the season, uh, yeah. but yeah. I can't put him above Darnold, as, especially like as an overall talent. So that's just I can't do it. Yeah, he's pretty low, seventy three overall. You being a Jets fan wearing a Jets jersey, if you didn't say anything about it, you'd be fake as hell right now. So uh, that's, uh, that's one for you. Thor, can you take us on another guy you, you caught on? Yeah. Uh, Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones is sitting at a 72 and has the same exact rating as one Mitch Trubisky. That is the biggest punch in the face that you could you can get. Uh I, I don't understand how Daniel Jones can be only rated a 72 uh, along with Mitch Trubisky. I think Daniel Jones showed that he's a, a great passer. Uh, he, I mean, I'm not saying he should be in the in the 90s, but in, in his high 70s, I mean, he's he's rated lower than Joe Burrow, and Joe Burrow hasn't thrown a touch or thrown a, a pass at the NFL. I just find that a little a little weird. Uh, and I mean, he's below Andy Dalton. Oh, like, you go you go down the list there. I mean, I mean, it's bad. Like he's he's anytime. in the same territory. He's only one overall better than Jacoby Brissett. That's just yeah, that's it's rough. cold. We got it's a couple cold. comments from guys. Uh, LQ said Goff's too low. 
Uh, Dan from Five Wide says, "I think it's accurate. Fitzmagic went to Harvard. Remember, so he's throwing in <laughs> he's throwing in the, the education IQ. aspect of this that I think people are sleeping on when it comes to Madden. Um, but yeah, Dan, Danny Dimes to me way too low, seventy two, especially when you start going off the list and and you're seeing guys that are going to be on benches in Madden. But uh, some one interesting thing I was kind of looking at was the." Uh, the lock to Minshew Haskins. They just kind of threw them all at 70. So I, to me, that was like, we're not going to make a decision on three guys that are big question marks and we're going to just throw them as seventies. And if you go again up the, the list, you see some guys, even Jordan Love. Jordan Love is going to be uh, a rookie coming in. Um, and we've actually seen lock a little bit. We've seen Haskins a little bit and we've seen Minshew a little bit. So I thought it was interesting for those guys being like, hey, I I fucking played last year and Jordan Love is behind Aaron Rodgers, but they're they're giving him the bump on the the Madden rating. So I I mean that's a that's a little interesting and might be a little dagger for those guys. Yeah, I mean, even um, if we're still talking if we're still talking at the bottom of the totem pole, even a Tyrod Taylor. I mean, I know it's not a, a fancy name to throw around out there, but he's more than serviceable as a quarterback, and they put him at a sixty nine. It's just, it's just, it's just wrong. LQ so wrong. says uh, Foles got disrespected, honestly, and I think where's Foles at? He's right under. He's worse than Mitch. Oh, that's, yeah. It's, so I Madden's, like that. Madden's trying to Madden's trying to make a make the starter uh, statement by the the one point difference, but I guess it is what it is. What is Foles rated? Seventy one. He's bot. He's he's uh, under. Mitch, 72. So they're saying Mitch is one better. Yep, I like that. I like that. Uh, yeah, I'm, sure, I'm sure you got him in some league or something like that. What, 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 about, what about towards the top of the list? Uh, what do we think about what do we think about uh, Dak Prescott, 84, kind of lower on the list compared to some of the top guys here? Is it accurate? That's disrespectful, I think. To Dak Prescott? I think, I think you look at uh, – some of these guys above him. Thor uh, loves Mitch. Says shotgun fantasy. Everybody, Colin. Just a side note. I mean, who 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 do we got <laughs> above Dak right there? Wentz, Watson, Matt Ryan. I mean, D- Dak's got mo- mobility. Uh, he he's got accuracy. He he's got everything. I think like you're looking at the the QB two for fantasy, and you you put him all the way down below all these other guys. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, I mean. Here's another guy too for me, Matt Stafford, eighty-three. I mean, uh, is he is he really that far away from Matt Ryan? Is Matt Stafford really four? I mean, it's only four, but is he really that far away from Rodgers and Ryan? I, I don't think Matt Stafford is being eighty-three. Uh, that's another one that I can think of. Yeah, I mean, he is he's higher than Kirk Cousins, so that's good, but. Uh, that far behind Rodgers, too. I don't, I don't know. Here's a, here's a comment from Twitter. Again, we're live right now. But uh, my guy LQ says uh, to have Jimmy G and Dak next to each other is insane. And I completely agree with that. Yep. Yep. I that's crazy. Too. And I, I also believe that uh, I'm on board with the Deshaun Watson needs to be higher. But I'm also on board. And, and, and Dak. And I am on board with Carson Wentz should be higher than 84. With what with, with what he did last year with the wide receiving core that he had or lack thereof. Yeah. And he still put up the numbers that he did. He still brought the Philadelphia Eagles to the uh, playoffs. Got bumped, but he still brought that team to the playoffs with that offense with no weapons. 84 is just disrespectful. It, it's good. almost it's almost like they're a Afraid, they're afraid to give these guys 90s. I mean, I don't you could know. argue, you could argue, Rodgers definitely needs to be in the 90s. I mean, come on, it, it's Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you, know, you, could be out there. Right. you know what's something I was thinking about? Um, is there any way you could pull up the the Steelers quarterbacks, just the Steelers? Yeah, let's see here. Because Obviously, we got Big Ben back this year, but I just want to see how bad Mason Rudolph and D- Duck Hodges are, are rated. You can only go by division. Just because, I mean, thinking about this, I, I don't think they're going to be close to Big Ben. 
And I think that says a lot about like an all over place here. All right, AFC North. Yeah, you gotta go to the you gotta go to the division. I know. Hey, he he's a second he's a second rated quarterback in the division. Big Ben. Really? Yeah. All right, let's see. Uh, it's just gonna bring up the division. That's my Mason Rudolph sixty three, Duck Hodges fifty eight. So that's that's all right. And what's what's Big Ben? Eighty one. That's almost a 20-point difference between Big Ben and who was their starting quarterback for most of the season last year. Uh, just, I mean, that goes to show you guys, Juju Smith's going to have a huge year next year. <laughs> I mean, it could oh, be a yeah. possibility, especially after uh, Big Ben. You know, he's not a young guy, but he, he, he did the hype thing, and he had his own hype video of him, you know, <laughs> with, uh, I think with a rap song and everything, uh, promoting him coming back. So that's that's interesting. Um, anything else from the quarterback side? I mean, we can really go. Josh Allen's kind of low for having a good, good, good year. Madden got that one right. <laughs> hey man, the guy win. He wins games. Everybody's high on Kyler Murray, hey. right? And he's hey. he only got bumped hey, to hey, hey, seven hey, years. Hey. Hold on a second. Mitch Trubisky got to the playoffs too, so. <laughs> Yeah, but he, I mean, Josh Allen was also like QB, like six in some leagues, but I don't know. I don't know. What, Actually, what, about, uh, what, what was Kyler rated? Like an 84 or something? 81? No, 77. That's what I was going to bring up because a lot of guys are high on Kyler, right? Going into this year, but he didn't, I mean, he's still behind like Baker. Mm. That's interesting. That might be that might be a little low for him in terms of uh, of Madden ratings, but I wouldn't put him much higher than that personally because I'm not. Well, as high back as like the 80s. He, there's yeah. no no there's no question about it. Kyler Murray should be you know at least a low 80s. I mean yeah. he balled. I mean he you know he had his a rookie curve. You know what I mean? But man, he, sure. uh, quick question from again. Live on Twitter, so we got guys coming in with questions. Uh, our guy Colin Shotgun Fantasy said, "Who would you rather have on your dodgeball team, Allen or Trubisky?" And I, you know, before, before before we get into this, there's a lot of factors in a dodgeball: your agility, your sprint speed, your awareness. I think awareness might be a huge factor right here. The arm strength might be Allen. I might go with Allen. Yeah, I'm going Allen because didn't I read somewhere that his arm strength is like a 99 or something? in Madden yes, this year. Yep. That is insane. Yep. Which I mean, I don't disagree with it. Guy's got a cannon. So yeah, definitely Allen all day on that in on that. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, we got we I gotta, would go Josh Allen too. Because Josh Allen connects man. He's he's taking somebody out. <laughs> and Let's, not and not just for and not just for you know that round. I mean he might take off the whole game. Hey. That boy does it. That boy does have a gun on him. All right, let's let's shift gears a little bit. Let's go. And Mitch Trubisky will hit somebody on accident. So he might hit he hit a teammate or something, which he's not used to. But in dodgeball, it might be the case. <laughs> right, right. Let's let's go to uh let's go to running backs. Talked about quarterbacks for a good ten minutes. Running backs. So Anthony went first. He got this last time. Thor, uh, what's something surprising with the Madden ratings for running backs you found? All right, here, let me pull it up real quick uh, just so I can see it so I'm not going off of memory and I actually have it in front of me. Ooh, I've got one that made me really mad for running backs, too. What makes me really mad, and it's not taking anything away from, like, Derrick Henry, because Derrick Henry, he balled out last year, and you know, yeah. he's a great he's a great, he's a a great, great running back. But let's face it, he, he is a power running back. And if you had your choice to start a team, other than Christian McCaffrey, how are you not going to go with either Zeke or Chubb or Saquon? Having Derrick Henry over Zeke, Chubb, and Saquon. Having Derrick Henry over Zeke, Saquon, and Chubb is just, it's disgusting. I don't care if it's by a couple points in the overall. I just, me personally, I just can't see Derrick Henry being the second best running back in the game. That's no way. No yeah. Way, no way in hell. That's he's the first a monster, that pops but up. I, I probably wouldn't take him over those guys either personally. So that's yeah, that's the first thing that like pops out to me. I don't know if we're gonna 
if you want me to list a few things or just go with one and then go to the next one. But that's the yeah, first we'll, one that stands out we'll, to me. We'll go around the we'll go around the table. So uh, I agree with that because when, when I'm thinking of like how ratings and everything come into play, like your overall, I think it's like a combination of a lot of things, and we're missing like the pass catching ability and, and things like that. But I think, like you said, Saquon and Zeke might have to be top uh, top three guys or top two guy. But uh, yeah, Derrick Henry, they're really. They seen that contract. I think they said they went to the financial aspect of Madden, and, and um, he did get that contract, so that boosted him up a little bit. But uh, Anthony, Anthony, what's uh, what's one from you? If you scroll down just just a little bit there, we can see here that Joe Mixon is rated higher than Alvin Kamara. Are you oh. kidding? That is ridiculous. That is completely ridiculous. In no world is Joe Mixon better than Kamara. I'm sorry, but I do not believe in Joe Mixon. I don't care about any of the hype he has. You cannot put this guy above Kamara. Come on now. That's, like, ridiculous. Thor, agree. I, you, ten agree. times out of ten, you're taking Kamara over, over Joe Mixon. In his situation, yeah. But No, in general. If you started a team tomorrow, you're taking Kamara every day over Joe Mixon. No, <laughs> you're not. You're taking Mixon. I'm taking. I'm. 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 I'm team Joe Mixon, man. The Bengals have done him such a disservice, and that offensive line has been so atrocious. And Kamara is in. And I, I'm not taking anything away from Kamara, but I mean he's in the ideal situation. The Saints' offensive line is. System. I don't know the numbers, but I mean it's top five, top ten. He's got Sean Payton, and I mean this guy couldn't. Kamara could not take over the backfield when he had Mark Ingram in there. They split, they split the carries. And Joe Mixon, I think Joe Mixon is a baller, and I think he is slightly better than Kamara. I'm not saying he's world better, but I would take Mixon over Kamara if it's a hot take, whatever, but I'll, I'll, I'll live by it. I'm not a big Mixon guy because, I, I mean, I, I think he's talented, but, like, even last year you see, like, we did that Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, you know, article, and, I don't think their schedule got like drastically easier where he started stepping up, but I know that off, you know offensive line has been poor and they didn't involve him enough in certain situations. But I've just seen Camaro like perform at an, you know a more consistent elite level. I think for him to, I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I'm a, I'm the Joe Mixon eighty nine almost ninety train. I would take Kamara over Aaron Jones, and Aaron Jones is rated higher than both of them. Hey, that's a it's a good point. No, I, I don't know. I think Aaron Jones is getting very disrespected this offseason for what you know. What it, it, it could be true. It's I gotta take my bias away. It's the Packer thing. It kills me. <laughs> Nick, uh, I've got something for you. It, hey, 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 hey! I get to go. I get to go before you go. <laughs> Go ahead. This is Nick's show. This is Nick's show. Dan. And I know Anthony. This this is some shit you'll have to, you know, weigh in on, and and I'm sure you'll have a comment. But this, you talk about something pissing you off. Duke Johnson, Carryon Johnson, and Darius Geis all have better ratings than James Conner, and I think that is ass. <laughs> Duke Johnson, Carryon Johnson, and and, and uh, Darius Geis. So pretty much and all of those guys have never been like at any sort of an elite level in the NFL. And if you think they have been, that's crazy to me. If you want to talk about their bullshit college staff, go ahead. But James Conner was like, what was he the one year? RB like six or something? That was like two years ago. We know James Conner has been elite in the NFL. If you want to say he's been banged up and this and that, that that's fine. But to put like Geis and carry on and Duke Johnson ahead of him, when you know the talent's there when he's healthy and their team came together, I thought that was a disservice to James Conner. I think that was very disrespectful to him. Yeah, no, I mean, that one I, I, I understand where you come I would probably have to put Conner above all of them. All of them. But in my personal opinion, I don't see how Duke Johnson's rated that high at all. Oh, I hey, mean, this he, guy's like – Throwing around to different NFL teams because he can't find a landing spot, and he's rated that high in Madden. Come on, 
Yeah, I get we'll, he could catch the ball. He's not a good running back, in my opinion. Oh, you know what? I, I it, they they were they were sorry. They were greater than or equal to. So Carryon's eighty two, Geis is eighty one, Duke Johnson's eighty one, and James Conner's eighty one. I'm telling yeah. you right now, Geis so, Johnson, that they're not the same level as Connor in the NFL until they prove that they are. To have them the same freaking rating and then Carryon's better. Come on, man. I think yeah. Darius guys. I think Darius guys can be. He just got to stay healthy. We don't know though. That's the thing. And I, and yeah. I agree. I agree. I'm on board with you. I'm on board with you. Um, I, I will mention two things that kind of. Right. One makes me laugh because I'm not a big fan of them, so it it just makes me kind of laugh. But uh, Philip Lindsay is uh, better overall yep. than Melvin Gordon. I seen that. Yep. I seen that. Eighty five. I think. Right. Yeah. That's what I wrote down. Yep. I personally, I like that. I, I, I like that. I like Philip Lindsay a lot. I do. I don't think he. I don't want to say I don't think he can, but he's obviously a better running back in a in a committee. But he's super efficient and he is so good. Like Philip Lindsay is really good. Melvin Gordon, I thought he was overrated coming out of Wisconsin, but that's just me. Uh, uh th- one thing that really drives me nuts is that. Uh, Carlos Hyde and you know the guys that you mentioned, yeah. Duke Johnson, Darius Grace, Carry On, uh, Carlos Hyde, Latavius Murray, uh, are equal or better than Miles Sanders. Yep, yep. And Thor, yeah, one thanks. thing I wanted to say with that is Miles. I, I was going to say this to you. Miles Sanders is rated the same as Sony Michelle. It's just why. I, 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 my, I wanted to say this when we did our you know top ten you know. Uh, but Miles Sanders ranked 16th overall from all-purpose yards, or for, from yards from line of scrimmage. He was 16th in the NFL. That's that's, uh, that's damn good. That is damn good. That's and to have rough. him, yeah, and to have him at the same overall as a Carlos Hyde who hasn't been able to find a home, and Latavius Murray. Uh, come on, I think that's just that's just very disrespectful. What, what about this guy? Close, he's close to that. What about Frank Gore still hanging on to 79? Give Ugh. it to him. He should have just, just gave him 80. The guy has been this guy has been that consistent for that long. Just give it to him. They said they got his field awareness and his experience and his mindfulness all 99s. It shows here. <laughs> That's no, I'm, just, I'm messing around, but yeah. No, but there's definitely ways that they tweak the system to keep his overall higher because obviously he doesn't have the speed or acceleration. So. <laughs> Nick, how about this one? How do you feel about this? Austin Eckler, the same rating as Marlon Mack. 85, right, as well? Yep. Yeah. I, I'm not on board with it. I, I think I think, the, <laughs> I think the uh I think the issue with Eckler though is the, like we know he's he's an elite NFL player, in my opinion. I'm saying he is. He he performs, he does his job excellent. I think yep. they're probably like knocking his like ball carrier abilities or something, which I can't pull up, you know, but I think they might be like, oh, he's a great pass catcher, but he's maybe not the best, I don't know, fuel vision or something like that out of the backfield. But 85, yeah, him, I mean, man, yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. I think I'd bump him up a little bit after last year, what we've seen him do. Yep, yep, and uh, Marlon Mack, 85, that's, that's pretty high for him in my opinion. I think, I mean, he's efficient. He does his job, but in eight, 85 is higher than a lot of other good running backs. Especially especially when they drafted a guy to, to take his spot. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah they, drafted, they, they drafted Jonathan Taylor to be a, a workhorse, in my opinion. They might start off at a committee, but that's going to be Jonathan Taylor's backfield before long. He might. One thing that I – Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead if you got something else on the same subject. Go ahead. Yeah, I said uh, – I was going to say, I mean – if you're Marlon Mack, do you do you take like these these ratings and do you bring it to your front offense and say, "Hey, it's it's still my job." <laughs> no, I'm sure I'm sure he'd get the door slammed in his face pretty quickly if he came at bottom with the bad ratings. Understandable. Yeah. Well, one thing with that though, I feel like, I mean, Marlon Mack's on his contract year, right? He's got one year left on the contract. I don't see them saying, "Hey." This is Jonathan Taylor's team now, just because they have Marlon Mack for that one year. Why? Why not use him this year 
And if he, he's not in your future plans, let it, let him walk. But at least utilize him and don't kill Jonathan Taylor's legs this year. So I, I, I don't see Jonathan Taylor winning the job outright at all this season for that simple fact. I think he might eventually get a heavier workload than Mac, but not. I don't think he's going to be a workhorse at any point during this year because um, of that. Unless, unless like they truly think that. I mean, they're grabbing the veteran in Rivers. They got a badass defense, great offensive line. Unless they're like, man, we're a contender this year, and we're just we're just going for it. Every game we're going for it. I, I don't know. Just yeah. I guess it depends. And to add on, Nick's, you know, to both of you guys, like I think. It's going to start off as a committee, obviously, you know, because they know Mac can do it. Uh, obviously, we all think that Jonathan Taylor can do it. So they're going to start off in a committee. But if Taylor starts having a good game after good game and the, and then the Colts are being, you know, they're in it, like they're in a playoff hunt, do you really think they're just going to give Mac touches because he was there first? Or are they going to go with a hot hand later in the season? They're going to go with the hot hand. And that's how this guy, Jonathan Taylor, is going to take over the spot. In my opinion, what if uh, what if Max the hot hand? I don't know. He's he, like people have said. I've I've read before. He's like pretty good at a lot of things, but he's not great at anything. So right. I mean, I don't know. Right. One thing to add on to the Colts. I know we're not doing defense, but uh, Darius Leonard, I believe, got like an eighty-five. Oh, he that's was just, pissed. That's just, that's just wrong. That, he was mad. Wrong. He was mad that about. Man it. deserves. I mean, that I would man be deserves. Mad too. He He's the number one the uh, IDP player. I'm pretty sure. I just, I just did my first IDP draft, and I didn't know what what I was doing when it came to defense. I'm glad there was offense, but he was he's the number one IDP guy. Yeah, it, him not being in the 90s is just it's disturbing. It really is disturbing. Like you guys have a job to do. How can you miss that guy? He was. How can you miss that guy? He was like he was one of those guys that like made his own hype video. You know, the minute the Madden ratings came out, like. Hmm? Yeah, I don't blame him. No, what? it's important. It's it's important to these guys. But the one thing I was going to say about uh, back to the running back thing. Yeah, I yeah. I'm happy that jo- Josh Jacobs cracked the top ten. Yeah, I, I I think I think I think he should. I think he should. I don't see a reason why. Yeah, he I agree. Should. Yeah, he, he, he's significantly higher than uh, Miles Sanders and is, and a lot of people are on the Miles Sanders train this off season. So that's interesting to see. Here's yeah, here's a, here's another. Josh Jacobs. Oh, go ahead, Josh go ahead, Jacobs go ahead. is Josh Jacobs is the number one running back in that in that rookie you know rookie class last year, hands down, hands down. Miles Sanders is great, and I love him, especially for fantasy purposes, because I think he can do a lot, especially with uh, in PPR leagues. Yeah. But I mean, I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bang the table or pound the table for Miles Sanders being better than Josh Jacobs. That's just not. Not, not the case. And to, yeah, and a comment on that, I think in that class, like you look at this class right now, and uh, I think a lot of people were teeter-totter between like before the draft happened, like a lot of guys like Jonathan Taylor. And then there were these guys like myself, like I was on team DeAndre Swift. And then afterwards, the draft happened, and now everyone's like, hey, Edwards Hilaire is the man, you know, for this, this rookie class. And I think last year, before and after the draft class, I think it was Josh Jacobs, in my opinion. I don't think anybody was saying, I mean, unless they were really diving deep in, I don't think anybody was like, you know what, I'm more of a Miles Sanders, Devin Singletary, David Montgomery guy over Josh Jacobs. I think that was less common than people saying before this draft, like, ah, I like Swift, I like Taylor, you know, that sort of thing. So, Right, no, I agree. Talent was there, you know. The, uh, the, other, the other one I was going to point out, um, I know he had some time banged up, but he also lost his job. Uh, Tevin Coleman rated at 83, which is higher than uh, Devin Singletary and Kenyon Drake that I you know, took note of, and, and also even with Leonard Fournette. How do we feel about Coleman? Me personally, just be you know uh, a veteran in the Madden game and knowing how running backs work in Madden. Tevin Coleman's always going to be pretty high up there because of his acceleration and speed. Yeah. Personally, and Devin he, Singletary does. And so that, that could play a, a role in his overall, you know, Devin Singletary is more, you know, he's not, he doesn't have the acceleration or speed that Tevin Coleman does, but 
in real life football, uh, you know, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. But in a video game, it does. So that's why Tevin Coleman's always going to be, you know, eighty three to eighty. And I think, uh, yeah, go ahead, Nick. I was just going to piggyback off of that. I, I I get what you mean on how the metrics play into Madden, but uh, Anthony, you can come back to Coleman. I think Leonard Fournette is way too low in in yeah. my opinion. I think way too low because I'll tell you what, his team was not good. I mean, with him, like he's he's a do it all back if if you give him that opportunity. I don't know if he will be this season coming up because of certain signings, but Leonard Fournette can can be efficient in the end zone. He can catch the ball, which is huge. He, he he's able to get the yards. I think he's a do it all back, and he's similar to like a other you know like. I'm not going to say he's the same tier. He's not, but like Zeke, Saquon, McCaffrey, even Nick Chubb without Kareem Hunt, those guys can do it all. I think Leonard Fournette can do it all. Maybe not to that level, but to be down to 83, I think is kind of kind of a jab at him, actually. Yeah, his situations, his situations, totally killing him. It, it is. It's. I hate to say that he's wasting his career away, but I mean he's wasting the prime years away at least. Anthony, were you going to say something before I jump uh, in? You pretty much said what I was going to say. I mean, Leonard Fournette should not be that low. I mean, he's a stud. We all know Leonard Fournette is very good. And to compare him to Kevin or Tevin Coleman, I think that's kind of a reach. Coleman had good weeks for sure, but nobody's going to nobody's going to pick Coleman over Fournette in any situation. I don't think so. Uh, Definitely going off of what you said, Fournette being that low is a little disrespectful to him. Uh, And Coleman being where he's at, I I could see it, but I'd probably put him a couple points lower around at 80 personally. Yeah. Any, anything else for running backs or you guys want to jump to wide receivers? Uh, I mean, we could say that uh, uh, we're going to hit rookies at the end. So, yeah, we'll, we'll do rookies at the end. All right, so let's move on. <laughs> You're like, all right, no. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm starting off. I'm going to be the first one this time with the Uh-oh. wide receivers. And, and my Uh-oh. guy, He's been waiting my for guy this. I, had, I, got, I got multiple things written down, but I'm going to start with the one that I thought was crazy. And I, I don't even know what page this is on. I might have to go to, like, page five. Let's see. Uh, more than that. Oh, man. Okay, right here. Preston Williams, 73 overall. First of all, Preston Williams, before the injury, was just as good, if not better, than Devontae Parker. A lot of people don't want to hear it, but he he was. He had just as many targets. He had a lot of big games. He was utilized just as much. Preston Williams is a 73 in this game. Here, here's some guys I wrote down, and I can go through the list, go up here and you know look at certain guys, but... Uh, Trent Taylor, MVS, Cody Lattimore, Seth Roberts. I mean, guys that did not do anything last year at any point of the season, more than a game. That even Zach Pascal, Alan Hearns, his teammate. Preston Williams is a good football player. I mean, he was a stud coming out of the uh, of college. He got into a little bit of trouble, I think, which hurt his draft stock. But this past season, before he tore his ACL, he was an absolute dog, and I think. You know, Anthony, I know you're a fan of him. Thor, he might even be on your team or used to be on your team. But for him to be yeah. at 73, he was on page he was on page six. six of the wide receiver ratings that have, like, I don't know, 20-something in, in front. I thought that was insane to me. Yeah, he's uh, he, he's very slept on. Um, he, he produces. I mean, he's I think he's, like, 6'4". He, he's got a huge frame, uh, great hands. This guy's going to be a weapon uh, for years to come. Um, he's young. Uh, he's got everything that I like in a dynasty league, especially that I would be looking for uh, to add to my team. Uh, somebody who's got a huge ceiling, I think, um, especially if two is going to be the quarterback here uh, or there. I think that if they establish a connection that he, he might be the guy. Uh, Devontae Parker, it took him how many years to have this breakout season. I, I'm not a big Devontae Parker guy. Um, Preston Williams, I think, couldn't be the Dolphins' target guy. 
Uh, he could be their red zone guy. He, he has a lot of potential on that Dolphins team. If he could come back from this ACL tear and be a healthy player, I would be on the lookout for him in all leagues. Uh, he's going to be an exciting guy to watch. And, yeah, definitely what you said, half these guys that you named that are above him, that's completely ridiculous because Preston Williams was producing when he was playing. And some of those other guys – are completely irrelevant. So I, I'm completely with you. 73, I believe you said that that's too yeah. low for him, in my opinion. Or any thoughts on, on, on Preston? Are you a press, Preston guy? No, I, I do like Preston. I do. I think it's just Madden player Raider. You know, the guys who do the ratings, they're just lazy. They're lazy and they don't like to dig deep. But Preston Williams definitely belongs to be higher than what he is. And I, and I think, yeah. like, isn't it? I feel like it's so easy to just just take like pieces of the season, right? And just like look at, hey, did this guy do things well? Was he involved? Did he did he perform well? And then if if like he's way lower than like guys like Rashard Higgins who like did nothing last year, Travis Benjamin did nothing last year, Cody Lattimore did nothing last year, Seth Roberts. I mean, we can go down this. Even Josh Reynolds being like the guy they got sometime here and there, Cordell Patterson. Is a good role player guy, and he can do a lot of things. But I mean, I, I think it's just crazy that Preston was that low. But uh, I'm going to get off the Preston tangent and uh, turn it over. Th- Thor, you got you got one that stands out. Well, one that kind of just pisses me off is Tyler Boyd being below Larry Fitzgerald, Deshaun Jackson, Cole Beasley, Calvin yeah. Ridley should be up more, but uh, Golden Tate and Robbie Anderson, come, come on. Oh man, that's the one I wrote down. Rob, Robbie Anderson, I, I wrote down eighty four. Get out of here, man! I hate that. I hate that. I hate that. Eighty four with Robbie Anderson. Like, what has Robbie Anderson done? What is it's he no done? Se- yeah. right here? It's no secret. I like the Jets. Come on, that is like that's a huge reach to have Robbie Anderson be that high. Like he he he's maybe the wide receiver three on that team right now. Like, and I you know what it's disrespectful, even a guy like Cole Beasley, 83, he's better than 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 Robbie Anderson. I don't care what nobody says. Yep. I mean, I, I could have said Calvin Reed, Kevin really too, but Tyler okay. Boyd did Tyler yeah. Boyd, he's gotta be better than Larry. I mean, granted Larry Fitzgerald, the Hall of Famer, but you know, he can't do everything he used to do. Deshaun Jackson, come on. He, he's he's old and he's a one trick pony. Cole Beasley it says even get me started. Yeah. And then Robbie Anderson, he, he, I could even say Golden Tate. He should be right where Cortland Sutton and Devontae Parker are, at least. I think so. And I, and I put a thing on Twitter today, and some people were coming coming at me about it, but I got like, I don't know, like 30 likes on it. And somebody said, uh, where – and I know you're an A.J. Green guy, or, but they said, where where, uh, where is A.J. Green going to finish for wide receivers for – 2020, and I said, yeah. I said the wide receiver two on his own team because I'm I'm a massive Tyler Boyd fan, so I, I don't want to compare the two right now. But I'm just with you on the train that Tyler Boyd has been good the last two seasons. And, and somebody said he wasn't efficient. He's he's been efficient. I mean, he gets a lot of targets. He finishes well in fantasy. He um, has shown that he can handle the targets. So yeah, 83 I think is kind of poor for him. See, yeah, I, go, I love go both. I, go ahead, Anthony. Good. No, yeah, just going off of that, like. I, I'm a huge Tyler Boyd fan as well. And like, I, I keep saying this, this same word, but hugely disrespected. This guy had back to back thousand yard seasons mm-hmm. with Andy Dalton at quarterback. So mm-hmm. I'm sorry, but like he, he's going to be a, a, a fucking dog with Burrow. Yeah. I think and yeah. He, he's not old. He's a younger receiver. He he's very disrespected. I think he's overlooked. I think, AJ Green being there, people are still overlooking him, if not even more now that AJ Green's coming back. But this guy, what two years ago AJ Green was there, right? And he had a thousand yards. So like, I don't understand what's the big thing that people have against Tyler Boyd because he's a very good receiver. And I don't understand why it. Why do you have to be either one or the other? <laughs> like, yeah. if AJ Green comes back healthy. We all know AJ Green is a dog. Yeah, we all know that. If he comes back healthy, that's a big question mark because we don't know. But if he comes back healthy and he plays the whole season healthy, 
Absolutely, he can be a top 10 receiver. Absolutely, he can. But the thing with Tyler Boyd is just, I think he's been hated on ever since he had a terrible 40 time in the combine. I remember when I was big into the dynasty thing, uh, even more so than I, I am right now. Uh, when I actually used to watch college tape, his route running is just, it's next level. And that's why he's so good at, you know, that's why he's so good right now. He might not have the speed. He might not have the burners to create separation, but what does it matter if you have the route running? If you have the route running, that's all that really matters. Yeah. If you can get in and out of your breaks and you can set up DBs in certain ways, you're going to get open. And that's why, that's why he's had so much success. And I think Madden just doesn't put enough emphasis into the route running. And that's why he's down so low. And it's, it's irritating. It's irritating as all hell that Tyler Boyd's an 83 and Robbie Anderson is above him. That's sickening. Yeah, I'll let somebody else. Somebody else can make another topic. You, Anthony, you wanna, did you did you have a good one, Anthony? Uh, just one thing that I found kind of interesting. I was looking at the uh, second year receivers. So uh, AJ Brown, uh, Metcalf, uh, I believe Hollywood Brown and Debo, and it's pretty interesting because uh, without looking right now through it all. Who, who do you think is the top-rated receiver in that class? I, I would say the guy that you forgot that you didn't mention. Who is that? Terry McLaurin. Okay, yeah. I, I didn't include him. I'm pretty sure he is the highest, um, I want to say. But not counting McLaurin, who else, who's second, third, fourth? What do you guys think? Um, A.J. Brown? I, I would go – I would think that – and I'm not going to look because it's got to be in the next page. I would think that it would go McLaurin, and that's what I said. They don't have an NFL logo right now. They're working on it. Uh, I think it would go A.J. Brown, D.K., and Marquis based off of last year. What about you, Thor? Do you, you feel the same way? or I personally probably would have Metcalf over A.J. Brown, so I probably Metcalf. So here's what's interesting that I saw. All right, let's, let's it goes McLaurin, A.J. Brown. Mm -hmm. And Where's then it goes Debo, no, oh. and Hollywood, and then Debo, and then Metcalf is the lowest out of all of them, mm -hmm. which is kind of crazy to me. He did drop the ball a lot last year. I will throw that in there. Personally, that I'm, a factor. personally, I'm I can I can understand you know AJ Brown. I could understand him being number two. I could understand their their logic throwing Hollywood at three. He was the top receiver in the class, blah, blah, blah. But having Debo over Metcalf is super questionable to me. I don't I don't agree with that. I think Metcalf's a better receiver. Debo did have major flashes last year, but I, I don't know. I'm personally team Metcalf over Debo all day. Even probably, maybe as of right now, Metcalf over Hollywood Brown. So, like, that was kind of interesting to me just looking at that. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, they were kind of all close. I, I, I am personally happy to see McLaurin be, I believe, the highest. Um, mm -hmm. AJ, yeah, he is the highest. I, and I think he deserves to be. Um, he was a wide receiver rookie one last year, but, uh, I'll throw in another one here. Um, I got uh, – what do we think about Michael Gallup being 81, which is equivalent to Kenny Stills and Sammy Watkins? Is that accurate? I agree. I agree with the, the rating for Michael Gallup, but Sammy Watkins and Kenny Stills being an 81 is way too high to me. You think Gallup's only an 81? If... I, could, I could see him being around 81. I would say maybe like 83 range makes I sense. To, I was about to say like because – I mean, let's say on a talent. Do you think? Do you think Michael Gallup or AJ Brown has more talent? AJ Brown. What do you What do you think, Thor? Same. AJ Brown. I don't know, man. I think I think it's I think it's tight. I think it's tight. I don't know. I think and I think I, I think Watkins though, and, and Kenny Stills being equivalent to the guy that pretty much almost split targets with Amari Cooper. 
and performed super good last year. I think that's, I don't know, I think it's interesting. Yeah, no, I think Stills and Watkins don't even belong to be in the 80s. But, hey, watch your, watch your mouth. Yeah, I don't agree with those, those guys being in the 80s. They're two extremely inconsistent guys. But Gallup, I would probably give a couple point boost, maybe around 83, 84, in my opinion. I think he's a great receiver. But yeah, I, I would not have Watkins or Stills up there. I don't know. I, don't, I think Thor might disagree. I, do, I know I can't I can't I can't I'm not defending Sammy Watkins anymore I can't uh, we went, through <laughs> that. went through an ugly breakup uh yeah it's not good so, so I'm just gonna leave the Sammy Watkins thing alone what what about uh I got two I got two notes on Bears players and then uh we, we'll go to you guys uh, and hold uh, on, I don't have any al- I don't have any alcohol in front of me so take it easy all right all right, all right. well well Allen Robinson Great performer with poor quarterback play throughout his career here and there. I mean, he had some years where he missed some games, but this past season he was like number eight, I think, for wide receivers in fantasy with not good quarterback play. He actually had great a great season in the past with Blake Bortles, who was hot and cold in fantasy. Uh, he's 89. He's behind Thielen. He's behind Keenan Allen. He's behind Stephon Diggs. Um, I'm going to start with that. Here's my other note. Anthony Miller – uh, had a little bit of a breakout last year, but still behind a guy like Quincy Anunwa at 77. So Miller's behind a lot of guys. I think he was like 75 or something like that. And uh, Aaron Robinson behind a couple guys that he finished higher than last year and outperformed. So any comment on the Bears player since we have to do our city some justice here or, or no? I, I even yeah. got rules on for tonight. I, I got to do something for Chicago, I guess. Yeah, de- definitely. Uh, I'm sorry, but you said D- Thielen's a 90. Is that correct? It's on, I think I got it on the screen here. Yeah, Thielen's a 90. I threw in Keenan Allen, 91. I threw in Stephon Diggs, who I'm a big fan of, but he's 92. But Allen Robinson Thielen is, is not a 90. Thielen is never going to be a 90. That is ridiculous. Allen Robinson he's didn't have 89. I mean, he couldn't get into that 90 club. If Allen Robinson can't be a 90, then Thielen cannot be a 90. I don't know. I don't understand that. I don't understand that. Thielen's a good a receiver, but Thielen's to put him dog. in the nineties club, that's ridiculous. Also, going off of your last point, uh, with Anthony Miller, um, rating, what was it? A seventy seven, you said? Seventy six. Seventy six. That's I don't think he deserves to be higher at this point just because he hasn't really accomplished anything. Um, I know you mentioned Anuya. Uh, Anuya is actually a, gr- a great receiver, but I doubt he'll ever play another snap in the NFL, in my opinion. Uh, hey, as- quick, uh, quick Twitter question, just so we can answer them real quick. Uh, Clock Management asks, what's DK and Debo? And just since we have it up, I'll just read it off real quick. We got Debo at 80, which we just talked about. DK Metcalf's at 79, so we just touched on those guys a little bit ago. Um, but yeah, go ahead, Anthony. I mean, you got your yeah, guess. Like, Anu is a great receiver. He might never play in the NFL again. The guy, like, I feel very bad for him, but he like broke his neck pretty much. So, like, I don't. I know he was already put on the uh, like not playing this year list for like the second or third consecutive year. I don't know that he'll make a comeback. But yeah, going back to that, Thielen being a ninety and. Allen Robinson being an 89, that's, again, disrespectful to Allen Robinson, I think. Thor, any comments on on the Bears guys? I agree that Allen Robinson should be above Thielen. But with the Anthony Miller thing, the lower, you know, the other guys on the offense are never going to get the respect because the Bears offense as a whole sucks. So, <laughs> oh. they just... We got a comment that says uh, A-Rob should be a 92. I agree. I yep. agree with that. Yeah. I'd like that. Yeah. Because a- Anthony a- a- Allen Robinson, he was known. You know, he's a known baller. Okay. Anthony Miller is not as well known across the league. Do Chicago, do we know them? Do we know him? Absolutely. Do we know that he has skill? Absolutely. But when the 
you look at the Bears' offense as a whole, it sucks. It's just the way it goes. It sucks. So until the offense, you know, improves its numbers and is, you know, gets into the top fifteen, top ten, and gets known, these guys are never going to get the credit they deserve. Any uh, any other interesting finds uh, for the wide receivers that you guys want to touch on? Um, mine's for the. I'll save it for the rookies. All right, yeah, save, save it for the rookie talk. Anything else from you, Thor? Nope, no, we can. No, everything else looks. Uh, we'll, yeah. yeah, we'll go over the tight end. So, quick recap um, for myself: uh, the Preston Williams at seventy-three, below guys that barely even played football last year, was pretty bad, and I think we all hated uh, Robbie Anderson at eighty-four. Um, not super thrilled about that. All right, let's go to tight end. Uh, I'm not going to even point to any any one of you guys. What, what's the elephant in the room here? All right, I'll go because I actually listened to some stuff about this. All right, all right, all right. I, I can't remember the YouTuber's name. I wish I could give him credit, but I forgot. I was listening to it when I was driving. Um, Bob Gronkowski is a 95. Yes. I, I, I get it, but let me uh, highlight this here. There you go. This this guy, the guy, the YouTuber that I was listening to said he was actually talking to a guy who does like the Madden ratings, and he said the reason why Rob Gronkowski's overall is so high is because two things that tight ends get measured very highly in is awareness, which he has, and blocking, which he's uh, he. Whenever he was healthy, even when he didn't even have a very good year receiving, he was still a very good blocker. So that's why that. From my understanding, that's why he got such a high overall rating is because of his awareness and his blocking. Do you agree, uh, though? I, with his blocking? Absolutely. I do. No, no, no. I 95. 95. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, just looking <laughs> yeah. at it, like, you can't. I mean, yes, I'm wearing Buccaneers hat, second favorite team. but And that's pre-Brady. That's pre-Brady. Uh, that's the John Gruden, Derek Brooks era is where I started watching the Bucks. But anyway... Uh, yeah, you can't have him over guys like Zach Ertz and Austin Hooper and Evan Ingram. It's just you can't, you can't do it. We you can't we do gotta, it. Gronk could, Gronk can be, Gronk can have a very solid year, but he's not going to finish just behind Kittle and Kelsey. So some people think so. Um, and a quick, quick uh, comment from Twitter here, uh, from Clock Management. Kittle was upset that he wasn't a 99. He said if he was as good looking as CMC, he would have been a 99. He said, <laughs> but hey, I, I don't know. <laughs> I Anthony was actually going to point that out. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I know a lot of people are very high on Kittle, but that's the other thing I noticed. Um, I've got Kittle in both my dynasty leagues. Okay. I can't For say now. Kittle's a better we, tight end. We, than we all, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Thor, Thor, we all know Kittle's on the block in the one league, right? Right, yeah, we know. All right, all right go ahead, Anthony. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> he is on the block making an offer. But the public I, statement. I, I, cannot say he, I cannot say that in Madden right now, as in like their true ratings right now, that Kittle's a better tight end than Travis Kelsey. I can't say that. And I, I'm a Kittle owner. I like Kittle a lot. But Kelsey's the best tight end in the league. I don't think anybody could argue that right now. Look at the history. Look at the stats. I don't think it's comparable right now. I get Kelsey's older. I get that he's maybe getting close to the end of his prime. But right now, today, Travis Kelsey is a top tight end in the league. He is, in my opinion. I think, and I got a comment here, and, and I've been going back and forth because the comment says Kittle's a better tight end than Kelsey, just not for fantasy. Kittle's a better blocker. I think, uh, and then he says Kelsey's a better pass catcher. I think, so I so I had like uh, an account arguing with me on Twitter uh, not too long ago, and um, I looked at the bio. It said like 16 talking, you know, this and that. I was like, a kid, you know, young kid, but he was throwing out a lot of good facts about him being a better blocker and, uh, you know, the physicality aspect. But I think, I think, I think it, we have to separate it a little bit between fantasy and maybe some other quality. Cause I'm personally in fantasy 10 out of 10. I'm, I'm Kelsey over Kittle in redraft and in dynasty in real life though. I think maybe Kittle brings 
things that Kelsey does not with the pass blocking and, and the, uh, I don't know, the, the, the strength and the athleticism. So I guess it just depends what we're talking about. Well, you could I play. I mean, I'm just going to do that for the sake of argument. What if you put George Kittle on the on, on the Chiefs? Well, I don't know. I think <laughs> what's, this, I, what's to say that he good. doesn't do what's what's to say that he doesn't do more than Kelsey? I mean, I don't yeah, know. But I think right now, I mean, Kittle's the but, number one target on on the 49ers. Would you agree? Kittle on forty nine, yeah, but it's yeah, it's but not a very Kel- good. Is Kelsey the number one target on the Chiefs? Might be. It might be. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, maybe not though, because you got to think like Tyree Kill is there, and he he's a, I mean, he's a huge factor. He also has he also, and I'm not taking anything away from Travis Kelsey. Great player, great wide receiver, one of the best tight ends in the league, hands down. But he does have the best quarterback in the league right now throwing the ball. He was the best offense. Yeah. And the best offense in the league, hands down. 49ers are up there with the best offense in the league because of a run, because they're running run heavy. And they're so yeah. efficient with their running. And George Kittle's a huge part of that. I will, George I will. Kittle say. is a huge, like if you actually watch yeah. the 49ers, they, they use Kittle as their primary blocker to set that edge, you know, to take that outside linebackers, you know, these beasts of human beings. And they put Kittle on the outside to take that shoulder and to pin him in, and to pin like a Khalil Mack inside. And I'm not saying Travis Kelsey can't do that, but George Kittle does that better than anybody in the league, and that's why he has a 98. Yeah. I think he does have a lot of good qualities that shape him. I think Kelsey, even before Mahomes, was very elite. I think he was still top of the charts for tight end, even with Alex Smith, who was obviously good too. But uh, here's a just a switch gears here. Um, here's something I found on here. What do we, so let me go to, I think it's on page two. I know some of these guys are not super proven. A lot of these guys have some hype to them, but what do we think about Nick Boyle at 78? And I wrote down that Nick Boyle is rated better than Irv Smith, Jonu Smith, and TJ Hawkinson. So we got Nick Boyle, better tight end than the likes of Hawkinson, who you can see right there. Irv Smith's right there. Jonu Smith's right there. So I'd say I'd say all three of these guys, they're all young. They're all guys that could potentially break out. But what do we think about a guy like Nick Boyle or even a Cameron Brait who are ahead of them? I won't even say anything about Witten because he's just a straight-up vet. But uh, what do we think about that? Nick Boyle is uh, number two you know, tight end on his roster right now, better than those three. Uh. Pretty much my thought process on this is, in, in my personal opinion, in my bias opinion, I'm taking every other guy over him. But at the same time, like none of those guys that you've named have really like accomplished anything yet either. So more than Nick Boyle, though. Yeah, but Irv I don't know. Smith, at least I'll say Irv Smith has because he didn't have a phenomenal year, but he. Irv Smith split targets and receptions, you know, and he did not touchdowns. That's, that was a separating factor with 84 Kyle Rudolph, who's a good veteran. He's a good veteran, but he still split receptions and targets, so he obviously was utilized. Yeah, like definitely in my personal opinion, like talent-wise, every guy you named, I'm taking over Nick Boyle. But I, I don't know how much higher I'd rate any of them at this moment in time, though. Here, here's here's two more, and then we'll we'll make sure Thor gets to talking here. Here's two more young guys. One of them, Anthony, you like a lot, and he actually had a great rookie season. Noah Fant or Fant, however you want to say it. I, I say Fant. Noah Fant, 74 overall. And then Chris Herndon, who did not really play this past year, but he did play like eight weeks of football his rookie year and was very good. He's a 72, so 74 and 72. We've seen these two guys play football in the NFL but they're still very, very, very low for tight ends, in my opinion. Just real quick, sorry, Thor, real quick going off of that. The thing that annoys me about that rating for Herndon is that he has the exact same rating as Ryan Griffin, who's their, the Jets' other tight end, and I don't think they're even close to being comparable. Ryan Griffin had moments, yes, but Herndon is like completely a better tight end than him, and they're rated the same. So I, I I was annoyed by that, looking at that as a fan of the Jets, seeing Herndon 
make plays happen and seeing what Ryan Griffin did this year, I think I don't understand. He's a, he's a good that. touchdown guy, Griffin. I, I will say that. But uh, Thor, what do you think about some of these guys, Fant, Herndon, Irv Smith, Joe New Smith, TJ Hawkinson being like well below some of the vets on here? Uh, I just, I've been playing Madden since Madden 96. Okay. And then, you know, the past 10 years, I got really into their ratings and doing fantasy drafts and everything yeah. like that. And it's just, it's irritating because they're just so lazy. They're just so <laughs> lazy. I, I will like, say real quick before you keep going, we do have a Madden rep on here listening live. Like, I'm sorry, but like, no, I'm, I'm okay, bottom, I'm I'm, 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 go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Go to tag Madden. Talk to all of them. Like you have a job. You get paid. Uh, uh, like pay me. Pay me. I'll dive into. There's no way that Noah Font is that low. Okay. There's no way. Yeah. And it's just like some of these guys have the same overalls they did last year. It's like they fucking copied and pasted from last year to this year. And it's just, it's annoying. Is it? And another thing I will say what pisses me off, and I'm looking at this right now, and it really drives me nuts. How is Mike Gusecki a 79, but Trey Burton is an 80? Oof. Oof. Explain that to me. That's ridiculous. And no, and no universe does that make any sense. I, I mean, None. Burton was good like two years ago, but I mean – is he? He's an athlete, man. I, I don't know. I don't know what I can even say about Ray Burton. He's an athlete. I don't think he's a good tight end. I don't think he's a good football player that that much. I mean, with the Noah Font thing, it really it really drives me nuts. Because he was good it, last year. He was. He was good. good, and he he's good. And if you if like if you listen to George Kittle was talking about like Hawkinson and Font on NFL Network, and he was just talking about how like amazing that those two were, you know. Even when you know George Kittle was the starter, but he said that he could not, he could not talk high, more highly about them too. And it's just like I get it. Hawkinson got hurt, and Noah Font didn't produce as a top ten tight end or whatever. But you got to recognize their skill level and their talent, and you got to adjust their ratings accordingly. Because keeping them as the same thing as last year just doesn't make any sense. Because he could show that he he already showed that he could do it in the NFL. I uh, just oh. and Trey Burton gets an eighty just because he threw a touchdown <laughs> pass in the Super Bowl. What? Yeah. What about uh? Nick, Nick, please say something. You got to stop me. I'm about to go on another rant. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking at my notes too. What about? What about Greg Olson and Jared Cook, two great veterans in the NFL. Are they still 87 and 86 in 2020? Are they still better than or equal to Mark Andrews and Darren Waller? I'm saying I'm saying there's there's no way that Jared Cook and Greg Olson are going to be even in the same sentence as Mark Andrews or, or Darren Waller next year, even if they're both 100 percent healthy. Because I think I think Cook has a good connection with Breeze, and I think he can be an end zone guy, and he's good there. Um, he's not young at all. He, I don't think he's as uh, agile and up and down the field as he used to be. Same with Greg Olson, if he can even stay healthy. I don't think these two guys are better than the future of, like, the next three. I think even Hunter Henry, if he's healthy. I'm a huge Hunter Henry uh, truther if he can stay on the field. But Mark Andrews, a lot of people are saying, is the number three tight end going into this year, if you want to debate, you know, that. But – Man, Olsen and Cook are still elite 87, 86. Uh, I'm going to say no on that. And, Thor, these guys uh, are guess, lazy, uh, Thor. Huh? These these guys are lazy <laughs> making those ratings. Somebody just said, is this Olsen from five years ago? And I, <laughs> I mean, that'd be nice. That'd be nice for the ratings, but that's what clock management is. Yeah. But like, my thing, I think, I think Madden is just afraid to predict the fall off. They're hanging on to these bets for some, yeah. some reason. They just they they don't want to predict the fall off, you know. They're trying to respect the veterans, uh, and I get it. I'm not I'm not gonna get as heated as I can about it as I did about Trey Burton, but uh, I really think that I get that part of it. They don't want to predict these guys, you know, their fall off in their career, which I can respect that. Now, we all look at it, especially, you know, a lot of us do Dynasty. So we see old guys like Greg Olson and Jared Cook and our immediate 
you know, reaction is just like, ugh. You know, yeah. you don't want that. Like, you don't want that in my roster. Why, why is he there? But they've been good for so many years. You can't just say, boom, Greg Olson's at 77 because he's old. You know, that's just my I, opinion. I'd be down to, like, even, I mean, I'd be down to bump him to, like, 81 or something like that. I mean, even Goddard was a freaking stud last year. He finishes a top 10 tight end. Is he really like six ratings away from these guys? He's not. I don't in, know. Real, in real life, in real life, no. But in copy and I mean in Madden land, you know, it's just. <laughs> Anthony, any, anything else from you? No, they're just, I mean, I get like maybe they're just trying to like show these guys like. They are early too. Yeah, I just I get like they're trying to show the, that these guys some like respect to their veterans. They've been in the league, they've accomplished a lot. But to say that they're still at that level, I don't know about that one. I don't know. That's All right, tough. we are an hour over an hour, so let's jump into the rookies here. Uh, again, you look at rookie ratings, and they will probably change. Two weeks from now, they'll probably change like after the first week of the NFL for the Madden updates. Right now, we got Henry Ruggs and Joe Burrows, the top two dogs, 76, and then everybody else is kind of down from there. Um, I like how, you know, a lot of people are split Judy or Lamb, and they just said, hey, you know, here's, a, here's a coin toss. We'll just have them both be 75 identical. In, in no way, shape, or form in any sort of world do I ever see Henry Ruggs being more talented than Jerry Judy or C.D. Lamb or even Justin Jefferson, in my opinion, but he's the number one, tied for number one Madden player. And I know the speed thing is whatever you want to call it, but what do we think about these guys? What, what's, some, what's some thoughts about the rookies? You can go on any sort of tangent you want here. Yeah, uh, I think that them making Ruggs the highest rated was – formality um he is yeah. number one he was the highest drafted wide receiver in the class so i think that they have to kind of put him up there one thing that i want to point out though that i'm like shook about is <laughs> i'm like shook I, like I, i've been looking I at this it's like, like it's in your eyes it's in your eyes your the color the, the, the color of uh your face right now just shows it yeah like it's gotta be it, it's gotta be with the jets no, it's not even that. It's oh, I thought you were like, like Denzel Mims, number six wide receivers, bullshit. I will reference <laughs> Denzel Mims in this. All right, all right, go ahead. I'm looking at these rate rankings and ratings and everything, and I'm like so confused on how Duvernay is rated the same as Michael Pittman Jr. He's rated the same as Higgins. And he's rated better than Denzel Mims. How, how does that happen? How does that happen? I don't. I don't understand that. I've been trying to figure out how that happened. I'm looking at this. And I'm like, there is no way I'm gonna say Duvernay is Michael Pittman or Duvernay is Higgins, and he's better than Mims. There's no way. I, I am still. I, I don't know how that happened. I'm looking at this. How is he rated that high? Why is he rated that I'm high? At this. <laughs> I, I'm like, I don't even know why that's a thing. Yeah, I like Duvernay. Yeah, he's on the Ravens. He he could mesh with Lamar. Maybe he could be decent. But but to put him in the same category as all those other guys and better than Mims? Come on. Who did that? <laughs> <laughs> I want names. Who did it? Uh, Drop their at. They're clearly a Ravens fan because that is not a thing. Uh, Thor, Thor, any any rants from you for the rookies? I'm not gonna go on rants. I, I kind of I, I blew the load on uh on the Trey Burton thing, but uh, looking at these rookie running backs, I just I don't I don't get it. Um, Where are they at? Jonathan T- No, they're all in like uh you know like the. Mid to low seventies range. Oh man, I was like, "Where are they? Where are they at? They're not even. They're not even on here. And they're they're low, huh?" And I and I get it. You know, they got these superstar. You know, rating. You know, so if you play with them in season, they, you know they have certain traits that you can unlock and all that kind of stuff. But 
how do you explain Jonathan Taylor is a 73 and AJ Dillon is only one overall worse? Just just one. What? <laughs> they're not. I, then, I don't know why they're not showing the uh, running backs on my list here. But yeah, it's, on, it's, on. it's halfback right there. Yeah, I, but I, I didn't click the other ones. Let's see. Because I mean, I'll just I'll, I'll just go through them. Yeah, you go go okay. through go through them. Okay, so Click reset. the best rookie running back uh, is an overall seventy-five. You guys want to guess who it is? Clyde edwards Lair. Nope. I, I would say oh, DeAndre Swift. 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 Nope. Acres. God no. Oh, I was about to say. I mean, we're running out of people here. Oh, Dobbins. J.K. Dobbins is the oh. highest overrated running back, or, or highest rated running back at a seventy-five. And I then the yeah. next, the next rookie running back is by Edward Herlair with a seventy-four, and then Swift is also a seventy-four. Uh, Cam Akers at a seventy-three. Jonathan Taylor at a seventy-three. And then uh, I don't know if you want me to keep going. And then you got uh, AJ Dillon at a seventy-two. Yeah, all right, I'm. Pointing. I think that whoever made that rating, Thor, saw that saw that picture of AJ Dillon with his shirt off, and, oh, and they posted yeah. his ratings. Yeah. Yeah, remember when Eddie? Remember when Eddie Lacy? Remember when Eddie Lacy looked really good? How'd that work out? <laughs> Taylor, though, man. So this is not. So we're obviously we, we relate everything to fantasy, right? And this is a video game usually compiled by talent. So they compile their speed, you know, acceleration, catching everything. You're telling me that Taylor Taylor is where's he even at? 73. He's the equal Taylor as a talented running back is equivalent to Cam Akers, and he's less than Edwards Hilaire. For me, I'm a big DeAndre Swift guy because I think he can do everything. But can mm -hmm. is, is Edwards Hilaire like a great downfield rusher and things like that? Is 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 Cam Akers gonna do the same sort of I don't know, man. That's crazy. Taylor's low, I think. I, I'm not even a huge Taylor guy, but I think he's pretty low. Quick question. I know you don't want to go on a big rant. We're already over an hour, but off the top of your head, do you know what DeAndre Swift's 40 time was? So I think his was not phenomenal. Okay. All right, that makes sense because I got him as an 89 speed. I mean, they got it. I Clyde Edwards and Lair's speed at age six, which is <laughs> yeah. He's not the fastest man. Taylor. Not. And then yeah, 93 for Taylor and then 92 accelerator. I I don't know how they did this. I don't I don't know. I, I if his speed is that high, the rest of his uh right. Things right. Must so he's just stuck he's right so, at that low. So he's just fast. He sucks at everything else. Like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> uh, that's, tough. that's a tough one. What about uh, <clears throat> what about um, Burrow seventy six, Tua seventy three, Herbert seventy, and Love is seventy one higher than Herbert. Do we? I mean, is it just like the progressive downward ratings of the quarterbacks? Do we think that Tua should have been closer to Burrow? Is Love really above Herbert? I, I think you could have had to a closer to uh, Burrow because I mean this is a video game, and before Tua got hurt, he was he was right there with Burrow. I mean actually he was you know before the season before he got hurt, he was he was the bona fide number one pick. Like that, yeah, and he was he was the guy, and then he got hurt, and then Burrow went off and then he took off and had a fantastic year, but Tua was right there. Tua was right there, and that's why I jumped in front of Anthony and sniped him. And took Tua, because yeah. I think Tua and Burrow they are close. They're right there. But love, so think, love above Herbert is. That's interesting. Uh, I don't know about that one. I don't, I don't know. I'm gonna disagree with that too, but they're just throwing I, darts out there. I mean, honestly, like I don't, I don't know why Madden's just delaying the inevitable. Um, they should just give Joe Burrow the 99 rating already. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. I think I think the thought process behind the rookies though is like they kind of pair them up a little bit. I don't know. They're they're all like yeah. all they're all they're so. All I mean, look yeah, at 
Lam, oh, Lamb, Judy, Jefferson, that. Rieger. I mean, we all think that they're going to be very good. They're all pretty close, you know. We don't know. We don't know right now. That's the big thing. Even my boy uh, Antonio Gandy Golden. He's he's a fourth rounder, and he's pushing some of these other guys. I like it. I just think like if, if they're going to pair these guys up, then how can you not have Jonathan Taylor? Like, there's got to be some way you could tweak something. Okay, I know it's only a one overall difference, but tweak something to have Dobbins, Akers, Taylor, and Swift all there. Yeah. Because all, all, all year long, everyone's going, it's really pick your poison, you know? Or not pick your poison, but, you know, pick your style. They yeah. all have their own. Yeah. And they're all really good at their own, you know what I mean? And I got uh, – I was uh, happy to see some of the quarterbacks uh, who I don't think are very good go very, very low in that end. Like Jake Fromm, oh, and the- 62 Jake Fromm, I, I like it. <laughs> before before we jump off, I will say this. Uh, I was listening to that YouTuber, and apparently the first ratings that came out had Saquon Barkley at an 89. The guy- and, Madden, and the Madden world just blew them up and blew them up. Saying, How the hell could you not give that guy a 90-plus overall? The dude has an ankle injury that is supposed to, you know, keep him out for like six weeks or seven weeks, eight weeks, and he comes back in three, and then he just gets freaking mad and just has their way with him. I think it's just a little ridiculous. Copy and paste, man. Copy and paste. All right. Uh, anything else, guys, for Madden? I think we're well over the hour mark, so. <laughs> yeah, we are. Uh, oh, no. yeah, just some, just some final thoughts, just to wrap everything up. Uh, Fitzpatrick is not better than Sam Darnold. DuVernay <laughs> is rated way too high. Um, Mixon is not better than Camara, and, um, give Joe Burrow a 99 rating and stop being lazy Madden. Right there. And he- stop being lazy. Stop yeah, being for- lazy. If you're looking, if, if you're looking for hard workers to take over their spot, I'm right here. I'm right here at FF Thor Mikey. Give me a shot. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I'll, I'll just say now, um, a lot of these ratings are going to change. Uh, I look forward to creating myself as a quarterback, probably for the bears and being around <laughs> like a 80, probably a 84 and then progress somewhere towards the 88 range and, and, and take them to the playoffs. So, um, we didn't really talk about that, but, uh, I usually do that, uh, every year. So, um, that's that, but, uh, uh, yeah, that, that, that'll be it for today. Um, this will be on Twitter. It's been live on Twitter. I'll probably post this to YouTube. Um, just cause we got a lot of good graphics here. Uh, yeah, us three will probably work on another project sometime soon. Uh, whether that is an article or a podcast or a YouTube or whatever the case is, you can, uh, catch me live. I got two guests on Thursday that are, uh, I actually got three guests, um, some solid, big accounts that we'll be talking about player a or player b um so yeah anything else from you guys no Gusecki is better Gusecki is better than trey burton and that's just disgusting <laughs> all right i'm gonna end it there and uh again p2w you can see our ads on the screen right there uh at p2w fantasy is myself nick at uh, Anthony P2W is Anthony, and at FF Thor Mikey is Thor. We are the P2W team, and uh, thanks for listening.